Our second recipient is Neil, and I'd like to invite him to join me here on stage right now. Neil's story began in November 2004 when he was diagnosed with Cesarie syndrome, a type of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. Over the course of the next few years, Neil underwent numerous treatments for his disease. But by 2008, the lymphoma was progressing, and it was time to consider a transplant. After a Gift of Life donor was found for Neil, the transplant took place at the University of Pennsylvania. There were some intense moments during his recovery, but he made it through, thanks in large part to the incredible support Neil received from his wife, Linda, who is by his side every step of the way. As as well as the love and support of his sisters, children, close friends, and community. Neil is a retired dentist and father of four. He has several interests and hobbies, including cycling. Neil is proud that he continued riding through his treatments up until the days just before his transplant, and was thrilled to get back to the sport once he was strong enough. Neil says he now has a new appreciation for life and values each and every day as very special. I hear you on that, Neil. <laughs> Thank you. Neil, this day will be an extraordinary one because you are about to meet your hero. Your donor is 27 years old and lives here in New York City. She joined the registry when she was a junior at George Washington University in Washington, DC, at a campus donor drive coordinated through a Gift of Life partnership with Hillel, the Foundation for Jewish Campus Life. At the time, your donor's father was undergoing treatment for lymphoma himself. And the idea of being able to save a life in this way was close to her heart. She amazingly got the call that she was a match for you five years later and agreed to proceed with the, don with the, with the donation without hesitation. Following her experience, your donor continued her involvement with Gift of Life by helping to establish the organization's, the organization's Young Professionals Committee of New York and currently serves as its co-chair of events. The group to date has registered 400 new donors and raised tens of thousands of dollars for Gift of Life. Though your donor said that you are a hero for putting up such a strong and courageous fight for your life, I think we can all agree that she is a hero in her own right. And so, Neil, without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you your hero, your blood stem cell donor, Ariel. celebrating Gift of Life with all of you tonight. I attended last year's gala for the first time and never imagined that one year later, I would be lucky enough to be standing here finally meeting my own stem cell recipient. I have to say, the donation process was a breeze compa compared to standing up here tonight. <laughs> After witnessing my father battle lymphoma, being called upon as a donor hit considerably close to home. I immediately jumped at the opportunity to help save the life of this stranger in need. As the one year anniversary approached, I was looking forward to exchanging contact information with my recipient and hopefully getting the chance to meet him one day. Then I got a call from Gift of Life and assumed it was a routine follow up. 
I never expected to hear that my recipient needed what they called a stem cell boost. After spending all day in the hospital for the second time and watching so many cancer patients come in for treatment, I realized how valuable an organization like Gift of right Life really is. I would like to thank my family, who are all here with me tonight, as well as my friends, for their continued love, support, and encouragement throughout this entire process. I know that this experience has impacted each of your lives in a unique way, as it has mine. I would especially like to thank my dad. You have been a true inspiration and motivator through this journey. I admire you more each day for never giving up and beating this awful disease. You guided me through the donation and continue to do so each day. I'm truly overcome with joy to be here today meeting my stem cell recipient and celebrating life with both my dad and my recipient. I look forward to a future and building a relationship with someone who is once a stranger that I can now call family. Thank you. Hi, Ariel. There is a time and a place for everything. And now is the time, and this is the place, for me to somehow get the words together to thank Ariel for her gift of life and for her gift of time to me. Three times over the last two years, this young woman has had the courage and the strength to step forward where another person might have stood still or taken a step back. The first time was when she was approached and told that she was the match for a perfect stranger or somebody that she didn't know. And she went ahead and agreed to be a stem cell donor. Many months passed by, and then she stepped forward again and went through her own procedure to donate her stem cells so that I could have the stem cell transplant done. Fifteen months after that procedure was done, she was notified again that her recipient was in big trouble. The stem cell transplant was having great difficulty getting engrafted, and would she come up again yet one more time and this time donate her white blood cells so that I could have a donor lymphocyte infusion process done. And she did. So now is the time for me to tell Ariel that that procedure has been successful. The recovery has not been so easy. But as of today, the integration is 100%. That means that 100% of all the bone marrow in my body, all of the blood that courses through my veins and goes through my heart, all of the blood that carries nutrients to my brain so that I can think and every T cell in my body, which hunts down, seeks out, and destroys any remaining malignant cells which are mine, are Ariel's. So what do I say to Ariel now? How does a recipient ever explain to anybody what the connection feels like? And I thought about this for a long time, and I came up with an analogy. And the analogy that I came up with is that Ariel and I are connected as if we were an iceberg. We're not a Greenberg. We're not a Goldenberg. We're not a Ginsberg. We're like an iceberg. 
And I'm the top part of the iceberg. I'm the part that people see. And I'm the part that's above the waterline. But what they don't see is the other three quarters of that iceberg. And that's Arielle. And her strength and her love of life and her courage are what keeps me afloat above the water. And if she wasn't there, then I would certainly sink through the water like a rock and I would die. And that's the connection that I feel to Ariel. And so, what do I say to her now in front of all everybody who's here who I haven't had a chance to meet and all these people that we haven't had a chance to get introduced to and what do I say to Ariel now for this gift of life and for this gift of time that I have? Time to spend with my wife, Linda. Time to spend with my family. Time to spend with my four children, their spouses and significant others. Time to spend with my new grandson, Ethan Matthew Dicker. His Hebrew name is Eitan Moshe Halevi, named after my father. And so what do I say to Ariel for this gift of time? And in all the places I looked, and I've looked around a lot, and in all the things that I've thought about, there's only one expression, only one answer I have found to work for me. And it's written in last year's journal. I had an opportunity to look through that. And the quote comes from the Talmud. But it's one thing to read a word that's written, and it's another thing entirely for one human being to speak from his heart to the heart of another human being. And I believe that that's one way that God expresses the power of something greater than what we are ourselves. And so to Ariel, I would say this quote that comes from the Talmud, that he who saves the life of one human being, it's as though he saves the whole world. And I wanted to thank Ariel for saving my entire world. Thank you, Avi.